come, Lord Jesus. May you be our way home. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if we could all stand and read a scripture together, please. This is what the sovereign Lord says. On the day I cleanse you from all of your sins, I will resettle your towns and the ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass through it. They will say, this land that was laid waste has become like a garden of Eden. The cities that were lying in ruins, desolate and destroyed, are now fortified and inhabited. The, the nations around you that remain will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt what was destroyed, and I have replanted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. Amen. Please be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing in it. I want to thank all those who work so hard to prepare this day for us every week and that we can do so in joy and happiness. This month, those of you who have been uh, here regularly will know that we have been dealing with the word heart, and uh, the synopsis that you see behind you has to do with the word T, okay, excuse me, R, that's R, yeah, it's a day, isn't it? It is. It's a day, and, and this, is, this is the reason, is because I did two of these this week, so I'm ready for next week, I really am, uh, so that's why I said T. Through relationship, God has shown the whole of humanity the plan for their redemption. This makes it possible legally, literally, and lastingly for God's reality to be our reality. Three weeks ago, we started with H. And the three words for that week were health, happiness, and humor. This has been an interesting journey, one that I have very much enjoyed because these are words that I did not choose. They were given to me and I was then given the opportunity under God's influence to wind them together. So we got onto the word E and that was excellence, everybody, and energy, if you remember that one. And I promise I'll publish this next week when we have the whole thing. The A was... An old, first of all, an old English word, ardor, meaning the ardor of his love, his, his strength, appreciation, and attitude. And today, we have relationship, redemption, and reality. Makes it possible, this plan, for God to legally literally and lastingly make his reality our reality. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you would, to ex uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel is, is, is a very interesting book. It's one of the major prophets, and we probably don't hear enough from Ezekiel, but uh, the, song, the song is still there. You know, Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw the wheel, way up in the middle of the air, and, and, and we, we enjoy those songs because they, they are the pictures that were given to a prophet uh, to help him to understand God more. So here we have a prophet in the hand of God, and he is being told by God what will happen in the future. So we are in, uh, first of all, chapter 36, 36 verses 33. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. So I want you to know that this God that we are seeking to know is 
the king of the universe. Now, some of you are saying, ah, uh, yeah, okay, so. But I, I just told you that we were on our knees a moment ago and we were praying to the king of the universe. That uh, doesn't excite you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the presence of the king of the universe. Yeah. Right, right. So this person addressing Ezekiel identifies himself as the sovereign Lord. Now, I know that, that uh, American, you know, the, the, the shtick here in America is for us to be very proud that we don't have a king or a queen, we, we have a democratic country. So why are there millions of Americans that, that watch everything that the British royals do? I, I just don't get that. But I think deep down in our hearts, we, we are hopeful that, that there is a, a, a human being, a, a human family on earth that, that can approximate the, the best of humanity and as I've been watching the Crown series, it, 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 is, it is such a pain. It is such a pain for a human to have to bear the weight of being this perfect person. It's this God that comes and, and addresses Ezekiel and says, I am the sovereign Lord, and on this day I cleanse you from all your sins. I will resettle your towns, and the ruins will be rebuilt. So, in this very first phrase, we have our three words. Did you see them there? Did you see them? Okay. He wants a relationship. I will do this for you. He wants a relationship, and he says, I will cleanse you. Is that not redemption? I will do the legal transaction that is necessary for you and your status to change from guilty to not guilty, from sinful to not sinful. God says, I will do that. So if ever you are told that righteousness by faith is, is a concept that you can only find in the New Testament, just remind them of Ezekiel chapter 36, where God says, I will do it. And yes, Barry, it's another way of saying, I've got you. Amen. You're here on Sabbath. I can't say it enough. You're here on Sabbath. And remember, my new idea of Sabbath is that we're not keeping Sabbath. We're giving it away. We're giving away the idea that God has told us, put down your attempts to save yourself. That's my interpretation of six days you have to labor and do all your work that you think is keeping you alive. When the God of creation comes along, he says, stop. I'm the one who's keeping you alive. Put down your tools. He's saying it here again, my friends. I will cleanse you from your sins. I will cleanse you from the idea that you can do it yourself, which only takes you away from me. I heard Eric talking about a religious system that exists in our world that has 1.3 billion followers, and in that system, there is definitely the idea that if you do certain things, then you will be forgiven. If you do not do those certain things, you will not be forgiven. And there are people that are put in charge of making sure that you do those things and they get to be the ones to check you off. I would refer them to Ezekiel chapter 36 where God says, I will cleanse you from the idea that you will save yourself because I've got you I've got you I have got you I will resettle your towns and the ruins will be rebuilt I will bring you into my reality 
Is that, I don't know about you, but that, that to me is a very exciting progression. It's a very exciting possibility to think about the fact that because of my relationship with God, because he is the one who says that he will fix this thing and bring me into a new reality, his reality, not this, not this reality, that's very exciting to me. The ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate and the destroyed will be fortified and inhabited. So you can see that relationship moves towards redemption, which then results in a new reality. We move quickly on to Ezekiel chapter 37. It is what caught my mind when I saw this R thing come up in heart, okay? Because here you have a very, very peculiar scene. I don't know if, if God had to give you a vision like this, whether you would have a cold sweat, whether you would be just perplexed. I think that Ezekiel had both. In, in, in vision, the hand of the Lord is placed upon him and he is... He brought me out by the Spirit, he's in, in vision now, of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Ugh. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very, very dry, meaning they'd been there a long time. Okay, if you're African, you understand that after the lions are done, uh, the bones still look fresh. But give it a year or so, and those bones are bleaching in the savannah sun, and they look very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? This is, this is now a question, this is now a question to, to us too, because we are sons and daughters of man, are we not? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, he knows who he's talking to. You alone know. You alone not anyone else, but you alone. He then said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Again, if you had any worry about uh, what happens uh, to you when you die, this is another text you can use to say bones minus breath equals dry bones in a valley. That's what it equals. Bones plus breath. Well, let's read on. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Okay, so again, I, I don't know about you, but I have this vivid imagination. <laughs> I'm seeing this happening just as I'm reading it to you right now. Are you seeing this happening? I don't know, we don't even need to play the movie because probably it would get a very high rating and some of our little children would be very scared. I might even be just a little afraid. But this is, this is amazing. So I prophesied, he said, and commanded. And as I was prophesying, as he was prophesying, as the word of the Lord went out from him. Okay, are you, are you interested in in speaking the word of the Lord to other people? Do you ever wonder what will happen when you do? The living Lord has asked you and me to speak his words to people whose lives are exactly like these dry bones. Have you ever wondered what's going to happen when you do that? So at the same time as we are seeing this literally, because I'm seeing this literally in my mind, I also want you to know that this is a metaphor. This is a, an idea that God is putting forward here. And of course, it's a vision that he's giving to his prophet. It's not an actual valley with dry bones in it. It is a vision that he is wanting his, his prophet to understand. And as, as he is prophesying, what God has said will happen is happening while he is speaking it. So I don't know, I don't know if, you, 
if you catch the importance of that, but just know that when God tells you to tell somebody something that is going to change their life, it's not you saying it, it's Him saying it through you. The, the idea just pops into my head. Jars of clay. Is that not what we are? And is the jar what's worthwhile? No, it's what's in the jar that gives life. So I prophesied and commanded, and as I was prophesying, that's, that's as it was going on, there was a noise, there was a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. When I was with my children just recently in Canada, we went to a, uh, one of these uh, shows where they, they take animals, not humans this time, but animals, and they cut them in various ways after they're dead, of course. And they inject them with plastic so that you can see the various body systems inside of the animal. They had a giraffe. They had a giraffe, which they had opened up from the head all the way down to his tail so that you could see the systems inside that giraffe. It was amazing, well worth the price of entry into the Science Museum in Calgary, Canada. If it ever comes to L.A., we should all go and see it because we serve a sovereign God who has made us wonderfully and has made his creatures wonderfully. You will never look at a giraffe again the same when you have seen it from the inside. When you've seen the tendons, when you have seen the bones, when you've seen the, 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 the heart and, and the whole circulatory system. This is what Ezekiel is seeing at this moment and it's all just coming together. You know, one of those time-lapse things where bones are coming together and tendons are coming together and, and the, the circulatory system and then, and then the skin is coming and the face and the hair and suddenly you have this army of people in their right skin. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and, and breathe into these slain that they may live. We love to sing that song, don't we? Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me. Fill me up with your breath. This is, this is, is a scene just like the one in Genesis where uh, God bends over and he breathes the breath of life into Adam who too was brought from the ground, bone on bone, ligament on ligament, system on system, and then God breathed into him the breath of life. So I prophesied, he said, and uh, as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Now you're thinking all sorts of video games, so I'm going to take that out of your mind and just say, yes, the Lord did this. The sovereign Lord did this. He brought them from dry bones into standing, living on their feet in that same valley. This is the new reality that has come because of a relationship, because of the change that happens through redemption. You go from dry bones to standing in your right mind on your own feet. Can't, can't help but think of Revelation. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 5. It says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Do you know that one? And I saw, the Bible says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away. My friends, if we would like to be participants in that, we've got to have a relationship. 
We've got to have a relationship. It says in verse 4 that God is going to wipe away every tear from their eye. And we often just think of crying. But I'm going to push this into this, this analogy connected to Ezekiel today. And I'm going to push you to say that God is going to wipe away the way in which we perceive reality. He's going to give us a new reality. Just like you can't see because your eyes are full of water, when you wipe away those tears, you can sing that wonderful song, I can see clearly now. Amen. The old has passed away. Yes. The new has come. Amen. He wipes away the tears. We can see clearly now. We can see the reality that he wants us to see. The old order, it says, has passed away. Verse 5, this has been legally done. He does this legally. Why? Because he's the king. He's the king. And all this has been done according to his law. Okay? We often say, and this is, this is a whole other sermon series, we often say that God's law is his character. He can do no other. He cannot act in another way. So the way in which he is saving us is according to his law and to his character. So he does this legally and when we see him there in Revelation 21, he is on his throne. He is the king and he has done this legally. It is, it is literal. It is literal in the fact that, that there is going to be a change. There is going to be a recreation so that there will be a completely new or renewed reality. So, what do we learn today? I say we learn that by choosing relationship, and this relationship is, is king and servant, uh, uh, some of us uh, may feel a little squeamish about that. Uh, maybe I can use the word worker, okay? We're not the king. The sovereign Lord is the king. But by choosing to be his servant, by choosing to be his people, we can be redeemed. He will do the change process in us. We can be re-enlivened and then re-breathed. They have these really cool devices these days that scuba guys know about. Breathing devices that are about this big. You know, they've got a mouthpiece. You, you just put them in your mouth like this real quick. And, and you can breathe underwater for a very short period of time. It's used by our special forces. I know. But anyway, these breathing devices so that you can be underwater. You can breathe in an environment where you could not breathe before. My friends, that's the environment we live in today, and we are needing the breath of God to be placed in us, even if we are re-tendonized, re-ligamentized, re-skinned, we still need the breath of God in us, which means that a, 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 a new reality is what he is wanting to give us. He's wanting to re breathe us. He's wanting to give us this new reality. And it's, it's a reality that is forever. Forever. Okay? It's lasting. It's, a, it's not going to change again. It's going to change this once. And we will have this new reality as our reality, but it's, it's going to be a forever thing. So he rebuilds. This is what he says in Ezekiel. I'm going to rebuild. He's going to recreate. He's going to replant. It's going to be real, folks. Not going to be just a hallucination. It's going to be real. Just remember, remember what you were when you were without God. Maybe there's never been a time in your life when you have said no to God, but maybe there has been. Remember what that was like when you didn't have God as your king. We can make a choice today to, to let him be the king of our lives, let his law be in our hearts, to know that it is literal and that it is lasting, to
to know that today we have the chance to choose. We have the chance to choose a relationship. This is, this is exciting. I, 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 get, I get excited about this when I get to offer people the opportunity to have a relationship with the sovereign Lord who has offered to redeem our lives, to do it through his power, through his strength, and to do it completely legally in the universe. That no one will be able to say, oh, you saved that person, they shouldn't have been saved. I, I think you got it wrong. He's, he's going to say, no, the evidence is there. This person chose me to change them, to rebreathe them, to bring them to a better reality. Not this, this fearful, chaotic existence that we find in the valley today. I don't know about you, but this metaphor is, is painful in some respects, for me to read. This metaphor is difficult because it is so true today that there are so many people whose lives look exactly like dry bones on the floor of Death Valley. Maybe, maybe I've felt that way sometimes, parched. I don't know about you. But I'm ready. I'm ready to trade in. Are you? I, I'm ready to receive the prophecy of the Lord. I'm ready for the sovereign Lord to say, I'm ready to breathe into you. I'm ready to recreate you, to rebuild you, to give you a new reality. So I, I say to you today, let, let him breathe. Let him breathe into you the breath of life. A life that begins your eternity. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that when you accept this into your life, when you accept Jesus' offer of redemption into your life, that your eternity begins immediately. Your legal status has changed. You are literally being remade and rebuilt Jesus says, let this mind be in you, the mind of Christ. Your mind is being changed. This is something that you would like to be a part of, then I want you to just say, yes, Lord. Raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. Rebuild me, re rebreathe me, give me this eternal life. Yes, amen, yes. amen. Yes. May you experience this and so much more in your lives, I pray, amen. And invite the elders to come forward now. <coughs> we are having the opportunity today to, to do communion, and we practice an open communion. And so anyone is welcome who believes like I've just told you, anyone is welcome to have communion with us. What we do ahead of time is this, this whole foot washing thing. How many of you have ever participated in foot washing? Okay. It's, it's a particular thing for the Seventh-day Adventist church. There's not a lot of other churches that practice this. I'm, I'm offering this especially uh, to our families. I think it's going to be a good thing to have the opportunity to, to tell your kids why you do this. Now, I am also aware that... Uh, some people don't like feet. If Michaela, if you're watching, I know it's you. That's my daughter. So she's like, eh, feet, eh, not so interested. Um, it's a symbol. But to me, it's a very, very important symbol that uh, I, I want to remind us of before we do this, before you have the opportunity to do this for someone. It is when we as a church are able to practice what we teach, which is the priesthood of all believers. Okay? You call me pastor, and I am. That's what I train to be, and that's the life that I have lived. But God has called you all to be ministers, to minister His love and His grace 
He ordains you when you accept what we have been talking about today. He ordains you into ministry. Okay? So when you pray with someone, you are doing what the Bible says. You are bearing their burdens. So I know that some are a little squeamish, but if you... If you take this opportunity to grab a hold of somebody and say, can I pray for you? If that's all you do today, I don't care about the foot washing piece, quite honestly, because I know that many of you are involved in service activities, which is what the foot washing piece is about. But I really, really want you to take the opportunity to sit with someone right now. If you want to stay here, Lee's going to play. Okay, if you want to go to the rooms that are prepared for men and for women alone, and then in the NPR, we have a big place for families. If you want to gather as a family and you want to pray together right now, this is the opportunity that you have to say, God, be in the midst of our family. We love you. And then come back real quick, and we will participate together with the symbols of the bread and the wine. And then we'll be done, okay? And I've told some families, I'm going to tell everybody, give the kids their own juice and bread, please, okay? My mama only let me dip my little finger in, okay? Because of that Catholicist idea that, you know, if you're not baptized, you can't have communion. I don't know where we got that from. Anyone have a background that might tell them where we got that? Anyway, I change that with my family. I give the kids all the juice and I give them all the bread because we want us as families to love Jesus. That's what I want. I don't, I don't, want, my, I don't want my kids, I don't want anyone to know that I don't love Jesus and I want them more than anyone to be with me when he makes that big change and we all see him face to face. Michaela, She listened to me. I told her she could marry anybody she wanted. But he had to be a Jesus boy. Her second date. You, you parents of young children, tell them this. Tell them this early. Her second date with the man she married was the question. And it wasn't him asking the question. It was her. Are you a Jesus boy? Thank God, Jay, you said yes. <laughs> and so she went forward with the relationship. Because you see, I told my kids, I want to be in heaven with you. Ain't nothing or nobody going to take my kids away from me going to heaven. So if you feel that way, take a moment. Wash feet. Take a moment, pray with your families, pray with people in this church, and let them know that you want to be in heaven with them someday, and that you believe eternity has already begun for you, and even though we live in the valley of the shadow of death, and there are people looking like dry bones all around us, that there is a God who can re-breathe life into you right now. Will you do that with me? I know lots of us want to run away right now and say, oh, it's communion, let's go home. But come on back. We're going to separate now, men, women. There are people like Barry outside who will tell you where to go if you'd like to do this as a family or as just a man or just a woman. So come back real quick, okay? Thank you for being here.